Science fiction movies have left us with the idea that if we alter our DNA, then we can transform ourselves into superhumans who have immortality, super strength, and that kind of thing. But in reality, this also appears to be a good idea, although in real life there are a lot of problems and technicalities that humans have to face in order to make these ideas a reality. So, Elon Musk decided that he would try these things, and it revealed something that no one had ever seen or heard of before. So stay tuned to the end of the video and get to know more about it. Hello everyone, and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In today's video, we are going to tell you about the immortality that Musk has to offer. With that being said, let's get started. The process of genome editing technology has existed for decades. In 1973, the first transgenic organism was created through the insertion of antibiotic resistance genes into Escherichia coli, which was quickly followed by the first transgenic animal, a mouse, a year later. Over the years, it has been applied across the entire spectrum of biological research, from creating bacteria that can break down crude oil to increasing the shelf life of tomato plants. Despite this, it was the introduction of the CRISPR-Cas9 system in 2012 that provided the spark for the rapid development of gene editing technology into the widely practiced technology that it is today. CRISPR is the subject of tens of thousands of papers published every year, a figure that is increasing every year. It seems that the applications of CRISPR know no bounds, with geneticists from all over the world applying the technique to everything and anything in sight. And now, Musk is a big part of that. Taking advantage of the bacterial genome is almost an old hat nowadays. Therefore, Musk has turned his attention from this evolutionary tool to the use of this technology for therapeutic purposes. At the present, he is shifting the focus of his research toward the treatment of genetic diseases, and laboratory advances are being made for a variety of conditions, and some have already been implemented in a clinical study. Even though it is becoming a reality, the process of altering human DNA has remained somewhat of a fiction. Musk said the modified DNA or mutants, regardless of whether it is Professor X, Deadpool, or Scarlet Witch, are still attached to well-known superheroes from comic books and movies. Musk claims that CRISPR technology for humans is currently used purely for therapeutic purposes, to fix genetic mutations rather than create them. However, these therapies do give individuals abilities beyond those that they would have had their DNA give them. In other words, they are becoming the first genetically modified humans, individuals whose DNA is altered for the purpose of improving their quality of life. Currently, Musk's company Neuralink is conducting trials at a variety of stages, from in vitro to animal models to early clinical use, with the therapeutic use of CRISPR in humans likely to expand as more and more successful and beneficial effects are demonstrated. Musk said there are modifications in the genome that give these individuals powers as they do to the superheroes of fiction, albeit on a much smaller scale. Despite the fact that such abilities are unlikely to save the world, to an individual suffering from an illness, such abilities may seem super if they can help them to survive. Musk explained that the immune system of healthy individuals acts as a formidable opponent when it comes to fighting infection. Since it is the body's first line of defense against bacteria, parasites, and viruses, it enables us to survive while we are in a world full of pathogens. He further said that, The problem is, when you look at the population of patients who have undergone a transplant, it quickly takes on a dark side, acting as the villain for both doctors and patients alike. Upon transplantation, the body perceives the transplanted cells as foreign, which automatically provokes an immune response that results in transplant rejection. At the moment, there is no 100% effective method of preventing rejections. But when matching donors to recipients, Musk said, doctors try to reduce the likelihood of this complication by making sure the two are as histologically compatible as possible, as well as by administering immunosuppressive drugs. However, even with the best efforts, acute rejection is a problem that has occurred to some extent in almost all transplants, the exception being those that were performed between identical twins unless true immunosuppression had been achieved. On the other hand, the immunosuppression itself can lead to further problems as well. As Musk said, we can administer drugs that suppress immune activity and help to reduce the likelihood of rejection. Sadly, these immunosuppressive drugs make patients more susceptible to illnesses such as infection and cancer. One of the key problems associated with stem cell transplantation is the rejection of the transplanted cells. 
The problem of rejection seemed to be solved at one time with the advent of induced pluripotent stem cells, IPSC, with the introduction of the IPSC technology. It would be expected that stem cells from the patient's own cells would not be perceived as foreign since they were created from the recipient's own cells. The body would recognize the stem cells as belonging to the patient, and immune response would not be triggered. As it turned out, the results did not meet expectations. Musk said there are many issues with IPSC technology, but the biggest hurdles are quality control and reproducibility. We don't know what makes some cells amenable to reprogramming, but most scientists agree it can't yet be reliably done. Most approaches to individualized IPSC therapies have been abandoned because of this. Although the current CRISPR techniques are not being used to increase a healthy individual's strength, Musk believes that they may be able to restore it to those who are suffering from a lack of strength. Duchenne muscular dystrophy, or DMD, is an X-linked monogenic disease caused by mutations in the DMD gene on the X chromosome. As a disorder with Mendelian inheritance, it primarily affects males, with females being more likely carriers. Due to the mutation, translation is prematurely terminated, so no protein dystrophin is produced, and muscles are weak, fragile, and easily damaged. DMD is a prime candidate for gene therapy because it's caused by a single gene. Despite this, DMD is the second largest gene known, with 2.6 million base pairs, making vector insertion of a non-mutated version possible. Musk's Neuralink team used CRISPR-Cas9 technology rather than to replace the mutation to successfully correct the mutation in mouse zygotes, demonstrating that a correction of the mutation resulted in improved muscle function within a month of the birth of the mouse. Since their first CRISPR study, the team has improved their technique and shown that gene editing can restore dystrophin synthesis both in vitro and in vivo. They found that a single cut was all it took to skip the defective exon, restoring dystrophin protein expression and muscle function. Musk said, We found that correcting less than half of the cardiomyocytes, heart muscle cells, was enough to rescue cardiac function to near normal levels in human-engineered heart tissue. Neuralink then used its single-cut CRISPR editing technique to target a mutation on exon 51 in dogs, restoring dystrophin levels to 92% of normal in the heart and 58% in the diaphragm. Musk said, Our strategy is different from other therapeutic approaches for DMD because it edits the mutation that causes the disease and restores normal expression of the repaired dystrophin. But we have more to do before we can use this clinically. There is no doubt that in the not-too-distant future, CRISPR will become a mainstream tool that will be used for therapeutic purposes. It is likely that more applications will be available as time goes on, and somatic gene surgery will become the first choice for treating genetic disorders. Anyways, folks, that's it for today's video. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way. And we'll see you in the next one.